Principles of Medical Laboratory Science. Let us start with the history of medical technology in a global context. Early medical diagnosis treated disease as a mystery. Disease was believed to be caused by the negative interaction between the environment and the body. So, by around 300 BC to 100 AD, Hippocrates, who was considered as the father of medicine. Why? Because his contributions to medicine include detailed observations of disease and its effects, and an understanding of how health is often influenced by external factors, such as your diet, the breakdowns in bodily processes, and even the environment. That led him to be considered as the father of medicine. He was also the author of the Hippocratic Oath. What is this Hippocratic Oath? It is one of the oldest binding documents in history and is still held sacred by the physicians up until today. Um, examples of its basic principles are treating the sick to the best of one's ability, uh, preserving the patient privacy, teaching the secrets of medicine by sharing their knowledge through their experience, of course, to the next generation, and so on and so forth. Right. So, he instigated a rudimentary and qualitative assessment of disorder through the measurement of the body fluids, or we also call that as the four humors. That is the blood, the phlegm, the yellow bile, and the black bile. Essentially, this theory held that the human body was filled with these four basic substances. The imbalance of these four humors, or we called as this Croatia was thought to be the direct cause of all the diseases, and health was associated with the balance of humors or Eucratia. The qualities of these humors, uh, which has influenced the nature of diseases they cause, example, the yellow bile, which causes warm diseases, while phlegm naman causes cold diseases. Urine. It is one of the blood fluids, blood fluids that underwent examination. Hippocrates, he advocated the tasting of urine. Could you imagine that? Listening to the lungs and observing outward appearances in the diagnosis of diseases. He concluded that the appearance of bubbles, blood, pus, pus and urine indicated kidney disease and chronic illnesses. Later on, um, six centuries, probably six centuries later, Galen, next slide tayo, Galen began his scientific findings by refining Hippocrates' ideas theorizing that urine represented is not a filtrate of the four humors and overall condition, but rather, it is the filtrate of the blood, which is true naman talaga. Galen sought to make urine diagnosis more specific. He used the phrase, diarrhea of urine, to describe excessive urination, or we call that now as the polyuria, which is a common symptom of diabetes and establish the relationship between the fluid intake and the urine volume. So, in the medieval Europe, diagnosis by water casting or uroscopy was widely practiced. Uroscopy now is urina urinalysis na siya ngayon. So, patients submitted their urine specimen or, spec or urine samples in decorative glass. Physicians who failed to examine their urine were subject, subjected to public beatings. By 900 AD, the first book detailing the characteristics of urine, the color, the density, the quality, was written. So from these early documented works, medicine and medical technology advanced because of the high mortality rate caused by plagues and other diseases. Next slide. In the early 11th century, medical practitioners were not allowed to conduct physical examination of the patient's body. Thus, they relied only to the patient's description of symptoms 
in their observations. By the 18th century, mechanical techniques and the cadaver dissection were used to provide a more objective and accurate diagnosis and to understand what is happening or the insides of the body. In the 19th century naman, physicians began using machines for diagnosing or therapeutics. Among these devices, if you can see on the next slide, is the first figure is the John Hutchinson's spirometer for measuring the vital capacity of the lungs. And the next figure would be the Jules Harrison's sphygmomanometer for measuring blood pressure. Balik tayo sa slide. So, also, the use of chemistry was pivotal in the diagnosis of diabetes, anemia, diphtheria, and syphilis during this period. Next slide. Previous slide muna tayo. The onset of medical, mechanical, and chemical devices is for the turn from general practice to specialization. This turn was brought about by the increasing number of patients and increasing amount of medical knowledge which generalists could no longer handle. More complex machinery and equipment used in medical practice required technical expertise, resulting in cooperative arrangement among specialists in different fields. Consequently, medical service became organized in hospitals. With this setup, large amounts of data were required in the diagnosis and treatment of patients. This volume of patient data prompted the need for information technology. The need for medical technicians and data specialists also increased. In 1969, 80% of medical professionals were non-physicians. This growth impelled the need for technicians to be proficient in the use of technology. Patients were likewise needed to be educated on the test done to them. Tignan natin tong table. So, by the year 1816, a stethoscope was invented. It is the first diagnostic medical invented by René Linnick and was used to acquire information about lungs and heartbeats. By 1840, the microscope was devised by Anton van Leeuwenhoek for medical purposes. Next, we by the year 1850, the ophthalmoscope was the first visual technology invented by Hermann von Helmholtz. By 1855, the man laryngoscope was devised by Manuel Garcia using two mirrors to observe the throat and the larynx. By 1859, X-ray was invented by William Rowenchen when he discovered by accident that radiation could penetrate solid objects of low density. Um, it also allowed physicians to view the inside of the body without surgery, used to diagnose pneumonia, pleurisy, and tubercula tuberculosis since World War II. By 1903, the ECG was developed by William Eindhoven to measure electric changes during the beating of the heart. By 1910, the Kenny method, which served as the pioneering work for modern physical therapy, devised by Elizabeth Kenny in the treatment of polio, using hot box and muscle manipulation, prompted the invention of a new stretcher, which we now call, which was then called as the Silvius stretcher in 1927, which is intended for transporting patients in shock. Next, by the year 1927, the Drinker respirator was invented by Philip Drinker to help patients with paralytic anterior poly poliomyelitis recover normal respiration with the assistance of artificial respirator. Next slide, by 1939, the heart-lung machine is the first visual technology invented by Hermann von Helmholtz, who also invented the ophthalmoscope. 1941, the cardiac catheterization and angiography. 
which first operated by Forsman in 1929 and developed by Moniz, Brebol, Rustoy between 1930 and 1940. It was discovered as safe method in humans by Cornant in 1941, which was made seeing the heart, lung vessels, and valves possible through inserting a cannula in an arm vein and into the heart with an injection of radiopaque dye for X-ray visualization. Okay. In the mid-1800s, laboratories designed for analyzing medical specimens were organized by chemical experts. Technical laboratories regulated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, began to be used for medical diagnostics in the United States by mid-1900s. In the early 20th century, man, improvements in basic sciences and integration of scientific, scientific and technological discoveries Examples are the electrical measurement techniques, sensor development, nuclear medicine, and diagnostic ultrasound mark the advances in medical technology. Medical technologies also made impacts on various surgical procedures. Further integration of technology with science ushered in new medical advancements such as the electron microscope which gave way to the visualization of sm small cells, including the tumor cells. The adoption of computers in medical researches led to the development of tomography and magnetic resonance imaging, or the MRI. Prostati prostasis, such as artificial heart valves, artificial blood vessels, uh, functional electromechanical limbs, and reconstructive skeletal joints were also developed as a result of these innovations. Medical technology breakthroughs persist through robotics, keyhole surgery procedures, genetic engineering, and telemedicine or the information technology. Medical technology has improved quality of life and increased life expectancy. However, this progress resulted in the re-evaluation of traditional definitions of life and death. Next slide is the history of medical technology in the United States. Okay. In the United States, the establishment of the first clinical laboratories and the development of laboratory practice marked the growth of the medical technology field. In 1895, uh, the University of Pennsylvania's William Pepper Laboratory of Clinical Medicine was opened to highlight the service of the service role of clinical laboratories. In 1918, John Colmer called for the development of a method that would certify medical technologies on a national scale. Colmer published the demand for and training of laboratory technicians that included a description of first formal training course in medical technology. It was also in the same year when the state legislature of Pennsylvania enacted a law requiring all hospitals and institutions to have a fully equipped laboratory and employ full-time laboratory technicians. By 1920, the administrative units of clinical laboratories in large hospitals were directed by a chief physician. During this time, uh, clinical laboratory laboratories consisted of four to five divisions. These four to five divisions includes the clinical pathology, bacteriology, microbiology, serology, and radiology. So, if you notice, radiology that time is in, is part of the laboratory, pero ngayon separated na siya. Mm -hmm. Next, 1922. In 1922 naman, the American Society for Clinical Pathology or the ASCP was founded with the objective of encouraging the cooperation between physicians and clinical pathologists as well as maintaining the status of clinical pathologies. They also established the Code of Ethics for Technicians and Technologists stating that these allied health professionals should work under the supervision 
uh, they should work under the supervision of a physician and refrain from making oral or written diagnosis and advising physicians on how patients should be treated. Up until now, mm, fault pa din ito ng ibang health professionals is giving an oral or written diagnosis. Sometimes patients would ask you, especially when you are in the lab doing laboratory works, of course, for example, CBC. So, these patients would ask for their result. And then, after giving it to them, they would ask you na kamusta yung result nila. And other other uh, health professionals would 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 say their diagnosis kahit na hindi talaga tayo responsible for making diagnosis but since kasi napag-aaralan na natin yon i think nasasabi din natin talaga so let us continue by 1950s, in the 1950s, medical technologists in the U.S. sought professional recognition from the government for their educational qualifications through licensure laws. Next is the history of medical technology in the Philippines. The Spanish Empire established Manila as their capital in the late 16th century. The first hospital the Spaniards established in 1565 was the Hospital Real in Cebu, was moved to Manila to cater to military patients. Members of religious orders who came to the country alongside the occupiers established health institutions for the poor and educational institutions for the elite. So, in 1578, the Franciscans built the San Lazaro Hospital for the poor and the lepers. In 1596 naman, the Hospital de San Juan de Dios was founded for poor Spaniards. In 1641, the Hospital de San Jose was founded in Cavite. The Dominicans founded the University of Santo Tomas in 1611 which in 1871 established the first faculties of pharmacy and medicine. With the establishment of both health and educational institutions, there were also journals which, was, which were published. Journals of Science and Medicine, including the Boletin de Medicina de Manila, which was published in 1886, the Revista Farmacéutica de Filipinas, 1893, and Chronicas de Ciencias Médicas, 1895. This was according to Anderson, 2006. The Central Board of Vaccination, which started producing and distributing vaccine in lymph in 1806, had 122- 122 regular vaccinators in Manila and other major towns by 1898. That was according to Anderson 2007 and Planta 2017 and Tiglao 1998. Okay, okay so 1876. In 1876, the provincial medical officers were appointed to provide health care services throughout the country. This was followed by the establishment of the Board of Health and Charity in 1883, three, which, which was later expanded in 1886. The Laboratorio Municipal de Manila was established by the Spanish authorities in 1887 for laboratory examinations of food, water, and clinical samples, though the laboratory was not adequately used in the study of uh, outbreaks. So, Philippine war hero, General Antonio Luna, which was employed, who was employed as a chemical expert in this laboratory and pioneered water testing, forensics, and environmental studies. 
At the end of the Spanish rule, structures of healthcare and public health were flourishing in major cities of the country. By the end of the 19th century, the Spaniards who were considered to be authorities in medicine, they started exploring the microbial causes of diseases. However, um, advancements in medicine and healthcare during the Spanish colonial rule broke down because of the Philippine-American War, which lasted from 1899 to 1902. In replacement of the Spanish health system, the Americans established public health institutions modeled after military healthcare systems. After the fall of Manila, the Spanish military hospitals was converted into the first reserve hospital in 1898 by Lieutenant Colonel Henry Lippincott, who was then a chief, chief surgeon of the Division of the Pacific and 8th Army Corps. This hospital had a diagnostic laboratory, but then it was not fully maximized when it first became operational due to its director contracting typhoid fever. So, Richard P. Strong, which is the successor, uh, who is the successor, I mean, he utilized the laboratory to perform autopsies and also to examine blood, feces, and urine, along with other laboratory services. By 1901, the U.S. government, through the Philippine Commission, they established a Bureau of Government Laboratories, which is under the Philippine Commission Act Number no. 156. The Bureau, which was located in Calleheran or the Pedro Hill, now, Ermita Manila had a science library, a chemical section, and the serum laboratory for the production of vaccines. The bio the biology I'm sorry. The biology laboratory was designed to address and develop methods in the laboratory, food, plant composition, and minerals were also investigated. Paul Freen, the Bureau's first director, he ensured that the biological laboratory would be equipped with adequate supplies and equipment such as incubators, sterilizers, microscopes, microtomes, stains, glassware,s and chemicals. The main laboratory was composed of two stories and divided into two wings, enough space for general laboratory work and processes such as filtering, distilling, and heating. Each biological room had a chemical work table with gas, water, and vacuums. The opposite wall had a hood with the flue extended to the attic. The biological wing's floor all had incubators heated by Bunsen burners and refrigerating boxes, according to Anderson 2006 and Freer 1902. Unfortunately, ang ganda ng building. Unfortunately, the building was destroyed during World War II. Presently, the National Institute of Health of University of the Philippines, Manila, occupies the area at present. With the re reorganization of Bureau of Government Laboratories in 1905, the Bureau of Science was established for medical officers who sought a career in laboratory research. The Bureau worked with the Army Board for the study of tropical diseases until the latter was disbanded in 1914. The Bureau also focused on pathology while well, the board was intent on studying with foreigners' physiology in tropical climates. Maybe that is why they were disbanded. The Bureau of Science worked closely with the Philippine General Hospital, the PGH, and the UP. It then became an active center for scientific research and instruction in the country. The biological laboratory okay. the biological laboratory of the bureau 
diligently studied samples coming from across the country. Every day, scientists would study more than 100 samples of body fluids to identify the racial basis of diseases through a map of the archipelago's pathological terrain. In 1909, the laboratory received over 7,000 fecal specimens, 900 urine specimens, and 700 blood specimens. The Bureau's medical research and laboratory investigations were mainly focused on microbiology in connection with the onslaught of the different diseases, such as cholera, malaria, leprosy, TB, and even dysentery. So, that's a slide. At the end of the Philippine-American War, the Civilian Board of Health established by the Americans was changed into the Bureau of Health according to Planta 2017. In 1915, it was reorganized into the Philippine Health Service but later on reverted to the Bureau of Health by 1933. The UP College of Public Health formally opened its Certificate in Public Health program in June 1927 with the aim to provide proper training to the Philippine Health Services Medical Officers. On December 8, 1941, Japan attacked the whole Manila through aerial assault and deployment of troops just 10 hours after bombing Pearl Harbor. It was then the beginning of the Second World War that resulted in massive casualties. So, amid this turmoil, the Medical Laboratory Unit of the U.S. Army, they provided medical services with the available laboratory supplies, supplemental laboratory examinations, and epidemiological and sanitary investigation. It was also tasked to perform routine water analysis, examination of food supplies, distribution of special reagents and solutions, culture media, and investigations of epidemics and episodics. The unit also performed special serological, bacteriological, pathological, and even chemical examinations, post-mortem examinations, and preservation of pathological spe specimens of value to the U.S. Army Medical Department. On June 18, 1942, the third medical laboratory was the first laboratory unit to be assigned in the Southwest Pacific area. Then, in 1944, when the U.S. forces landed in Leyte, the laboratories including the third, the fifth, and eighth medical laboratories, and even the 19th medical general laboratory, they were relocated to the West Pacific area. Added to the list were the 26 and 27 medical laboratories and the 363rd medical composite detachment. These medical units were not merged but deployed separately as a small detachments or mobile lab sections to military bases in different islands. The 19th Medical General Laboratory the 3rd Medical Laboratory and 363rd Medical Composite Detachment were all operate, operating in Leyte. They were operated in Leyte. The 27th Medical Laboratory operated in Tacloban and 26th Medical Laboratory operated in Lingayen Gulf, which is the only laboratory unit, the 26th Med Medical Laboratory. It was the only laboratory unit in Luzon for six months following the U.S. invasion on January 9, 1945. Next, uh, the first clinical laboratory in the Philippines was established during World War II by the 6th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army at Kirikata Street, Santa Cruz, Manila. It is now known as the Manila Public Health Laboratory, according to Cardona and others, 2015, Moraleta, 2012, Rabor, 2016, Suba and Milianis, 2017. When the U.S. Army left in June of 1945, the laboratory was endorsed to the National Department of Health and was non-operational until it was reopened in October of the same year by Dr. Pio de Roda with the help of then 
Manila City Health Officer Dr. Mariano Ikesiano. After instituting the Public Health Laboratory in Manila, Dr. Pio de Roda, along with Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana, they conducted a training program for aspiring lab workers. Later on, Dr. Santa Ana was asked to prepare a six-month six -month formal syllabus for the training program with certificate for the trainees upon completion. So back then, six months lang pag naging lab, work, lab worker ka. Dr. Tirso Briones joined the two later on. The training program ended in 1954 when the Bureau of Private Education approved a four-year course in Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. By 1954, naging Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, naging four-year course na siya. In the same year, the Manila Sanitarium and Hospital, or the MSH, opened the first school of medical technology in the Philippines under the leadership of Mrs. Willa Hedrick, the wife of Dr. Elvin Hedrick. Soon after, MSH started its medical internship and residency training program, which was affiliated with Loma Linda University in California. Internship was in California back then. In 1954, the Philippine Union College of the, or the PUC in Baisakaloocan City, now Adventist University of the Philippines, they absorbed MSH School of Medical Technology. What was left with MSH was the facility for its clinical division. Dr. Jesumali was the first graduate of the medical technology program. He later graduated with Doctor of Medicine at the FEU and became a successful ob in the U.S. University of Santo Tomas initially offered the medical technology course as an elective for pharmacy students in 1957. Um, if I'm not mistaken, up until now, ata, under the College of Pharmacy pa rin ang medical technology sa USD. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. It was only in 1961 that medical technology was recognized as an official program in USD. The inventions and innovations in the field of medical laboratory. Okay, let us refer to the table. For the year 1660, Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, the father of microbiology, was known for his work on the improvement of the microscope. By 796, Edward Jenner discovered vaccination to establish immunity to smallpox, his impact of contribution, immunology. 1880, Marie Francois Xavier Bichat identified organs by their type of tissues. His impact of contribution, histology. 1835, Agostino Bassi produced disease in worms by injection of organic material, which was then the beginning of bacteriology. By 1857, Louis Pasteur successfully produced immunity to rabies. By 1886, Gregor Mendel enunciated his law of inherited characteristics from studies on plants. By 1870, Joseph Lister, he demonstrated that surgical infections are caused by airborne organisms. 1877, Robert Koch presented the first pictures of bacilli, or anthrax, and later tubercle bacilli. 1886, Elie Mechnikov, he described phagocytes in blood and their role in fighting infection. 1886 man, Ernest Ernst von Bergman, he introduced a steam sterilization in surgery. 1902, Karl Leinsteiner, he distinguished blood groups through the development of the ABO blood group system. 1906, August von Wasserman, he developed immunology, immunology, I'm sorry, test for syphilis. 
by the same year by the same year Howard Ricketts discovered microorganisms whose range lies between bacteria and viruses called the Ricketts by 1929 Hans Fischer he worked out the structure of hemoglobin 1954 Jonas Salk developed the poliomyelitis vaccine, the SOC vaccine. It was named after him, SOC vaccine. 1973, James Westgard introduced the Westgard rules for quality control in the clinical laboratory. Nasa clinical chemistry yan ngayon. Westgard rules used in the quality control. 1980, Baruch Samuel Blumberg he introduced the hepatitis B vaccine. 1985, Carrie Mullis developed the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR. 1992, Anjay Van Isterteham, he introduced the intracytoplasmic sperm injection or the IVF. 1998, James Thompson derived the first human stem cell line. So that ends our. Epic.